Yes, the playoffs are going on, and this is me surprising you all with not doing the stereotypical and actually posting a video that isn't playoff hockey centric. With recent events tra transpiring, such as Jack Eichel's postseason exit interview and the Edmonton Oilers' early postseason exit, they both have one central theme, or rather, they have something in common. Players who are captains largely because they're the best players, as in they wear the C not necessarily because they're the best communicators, two-way players, or leaders necessarily, but because of their skill set. And with that, here are two NHL captains that maybe aren't the best for captaincy. So before I get started, I just wanted to remind viewers that I do have some credibility on this sort of thing. As in, if you go back to my video that I released before the start of the 2021 season, all teams that have named a captain thus far on the list were my choices, and I was right 5 out of 5. Not trying to sound cocky, but rather just saying that I'm not half bad in recognizing captain material apparently. After the Buffalo Sabres season came to a close, Eichel once again shook the hockey world during his season exit interview. As the situation has been one that would be very difficult really for anyone to extend for the amount of time that he has. As during his time with Buffalo, Eichel has been the face of the Sabres organization. He's been with the team throughout the ups and downs, mostly downs unfortunately, but I do have to hand it to him, he has been loyal to the club that once drafted him second overall. But as good of a player as Eichel is, he has a tendency to show frustration on a continual basis whether it be on the ice in front of the team or in interviews with media. For example, during the season exit interview, Eichel said, quote, I have to do what's best for Jack Eichel, and I want to be ready to play hockey next year wherever that may be. Now I'm sure most of you have heard someone talk about this, and rightfully so. But here's the thing with that statement. As frustrated as you would be as a captain, is the best way to handle it basically telling everyone that you've lost touch with your organization and that you want out? And I know, the Sabre situation has been grimmer than usual, but this has happened almost every year, and it's been a pattern. I mean, this was the guy that came into the 2015 draft saying he was ready to top Connor McDavid, so take that how you want. But Jack, why would that be a bad thing? I mean, isn't it good to be confident? Yeah, it is. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. That's why I said I don't know why people are making a deal of it. But yes, the problem with the Sabres has been largely on management's shoulders, but in my opinion, Eichel's as well. He changed his number, was speculated to have a hand in the Dan Bilesmo firing, and here's what makes the, that whole situation even more suspicious, is after Bilesmo was let go, according to Elliot Friedman, the Sabres were immediately looking to bring in Eichel's former BU coach David Quinn, so it definitely seems like he was trying to dictate the next bench boss. I think Jack Eichel and Dan Bilesmo had their battles. Um, I do think that the Buffalo Sabres have investigated the possibility of bringing in David Quinn, the coach at Boston University, who is Jack Eichel's college coach, of being their next head coach. I think all of that is true. But I, I think now, and we're talking, the report here said that Jack Eichel was not going to sign an extension with the Buffalo Sabres if... Dan Bilesman was still the head coach. Now, this is definitely not a personal attack on Jack Eichel, just me saying that in my opinion, despite all of his talents, he's just not the best suited for captaincy. As a player that's truly a captain, doesn't create drama, they're great communicators, and they know that the team comes first and not them. At 19 years of age, Connor McDavid made history as the NHL's youngest captain on record. As the prodigy, despite having a shortened rookie season, had already dazzled the hockey world with his speed and scoring ability. The captain presented a rare but valuable quality similar to Sidney Crosby, as in, he's relentless in improving his game despite already being leaps and bounds over his average opponents in skill. But here's where my argument is for number 97 not being the greatest fit for the C. Yes, he does seem to be more humble, I would say, than Eichel, personality-wise, which is great, but his communication skills seem to be lacking in general. I mean, let's be honest, have you watched him in post-game interviews? Not a diss, but rather just stating that if you're going to be a team leader, you need to be able to be approachable. And I think it was a good example of this issue, especially during Game 4 of Edmonton's first round series against Winnipeg. After making his way to the bench, McDavid, who was frustrated with teammate Jesse Pugliarvi, had made the decision not to go to the source of his dismay, but rather oddly to turn to a coach and voice his frustrations. Now, if you're a 
good communicator and shall we say people oriented, you're going to naturally do what makes more sense and talk to the source of your problem rather than having a mediator. Am I wrong about that? Most of us can recall a similar altercation I definitely can just by its humoristic quality. And no, neither Evgeny Malkin and Phil Kessel are captains or have been captains who were arguing, but they were obviously upset with each other. But it was how they handled it that was much more constructive, as they faced each other and talked it out eventually. Well, Kessel kind of shouted, but he directed his frustration directly at Evgeny Malkin. And yes, emotion isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just how you use it. Another point here is the fact that after defenseman Ethan Bear was already visibly upset with himself after turning over the puck and causing a Winnipeg goal to happen, McDavid could be shown laughing about the goal. In my opinion, a constructive way to use that emotion would be to try and mellow out a little and then encourage the player who had messed up rather than making him feel worse than he already does. Did you catch the bench reaction? Show Connor McDavid again. Show, show it, show it. He's laughing. This is not the reaction of a captain rallying the troops. Come on, guys, don't worry, we can do this. This is the reaction of a guy going through the middle of his Joker origin story. And by the way, perhaps not emphasized enough is on the fourth and game-tying goal during the 4-1 collapse, it was McDavid ringing it around the boards and getting it intercepted that started it all. As a captain, you're in a position of authority and status. So for example, if a teacher in a class classroom laughed at their student after they got a bad grade on a test, how is that going to help them do better? Or even is that an appropriately constructive way to go about it? In my opinion, no. Also, what do Mark Stone, Ryan O'Reilly, Nico Heischer, and Dylan Larkin all have in common? They play a competitive game at both ends of the ice which sets the example, boosts the team on both zones, and makes the team all around harder to play against. Yes, McDavid is amazing at scoring, but personality and playing style wise, uh, I don't think he's the best suited for captaincy. 